following set of data is randomly selected from an STA 2122 class of mine from spring 2010. The list includes clicker points earned in class and their final averages. Use the data to find the least squares prediction line. So the problem right here tells us clearly what to do. We want to find the least squares prediction line. All right, now what's really nice about this problem is they've gone ahead and given us all those summary values that we normally have to calculate from the data, right? So we have the sum of the x column, the sum of x squared, we have the sum of x times y, right? And we have the sum of y and the sum of y squared. Okay, so let's look at the problem here and try to put the values they gave us to use in order to come up with the least squares prediction line. All right, so the first thing you want to do once you have all that data tabulated like they've done for us is to come up with a quantity called sum of squares for x, right? So sum of squares x, x is the notation that they use. And the formula is basically the top of the variance formula without the denominator, right? So we have the summation of x squared minus parentheses the summation of x quantity squared over n. So that's the formula essentially. So now we just plug in these values which we have given to us in the problem. So we're told the summation of x squared is 4,737. 4,737. We're then told that the summation of x, this part in the parentheses, is 171. And we're going to square that value and divide it by n, the number of ordered pairs we had in the problem. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ordered pairs. All right, so let's work that out and see what that gives us as an answer. Okay, so we have 4,737 minus 171 squared divided by 8. And when we're done with that, we get the answer 1,081.875. So this value works out to be 1,081.875. Okay. Let's do the next thing that we have to do. Our next calculation is going to involve SSXY. So this is the sum of squares for the mixed term. And if we follow the pattern that we see here, it's going to basically be the sum of the x times y value, right? Just like this is a sum of x squared, this is x times y. Because this is the same as the sum of x times x, this is the sum of x times y, just following the notation. And then this is like the sum of x times the sum of x. Now it'll be the sum of x times the sum of y all over n. So that's the pattern in the formula. All right, now the summation of xy we have, it's 15,013, so 15,013, minus the sum of x, which we saw was 171, times the sum of y, which is 648, all divided by eight, which is the number of ordered pairs in the problem. So let's see what that works out to be with our calculator. Okay, so we have 15,013, right? Minus 171 times 648 divided by eight. We get the answer 1,162. 1,162. All right, so that's our sum of squares for the mixed term, x, y. Now from here, we're going to use that to determine our slope, which is beta 1 hat. So it's our estimate of the slope, right? OK, so now from here, let's go ahead and plug in the formula. It's the sum of squares x, y, the mixed term, over the sum of squares for the x term. Now, the sum of squares in the mixed term, we worked out to be 1,162. And that'll be divided by the sum of squares for the x term, which is 1,081.875. OK, so let's go ahead and put these together then. 1162 divided by 1,081.875. All right, we'll work that out. We end up with 1.07. Four zero six dot 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 right okay so there it is that's our estimate of the slope that's the first part of the least squares prediction line that we have to come up with the next part is the y-intercept so we're gonna have to do beta naught hat and this has a very simple formula it's the y bar minus
beta 1 hat times x bar, where y bar is the sample mean for y and x bar is the sample mean for x. So we have to determine those quantities separately. Let's just work them out quickly right here on the page where we're going to do the formula. So this y bar is actually going to be 648, the sum of y, divided by 8, right? So it's going to be, in this case, 648 over 8. That's y bar minus the beta 1. We found that to be 1.07406 dot dot dot, right? Times the x bar. Now x bar is going to be the summation of x divided by n. So summation of x is 171 divided by n, the number of ordered pairs in the problem, it's 8. All right, let's work that out. Now, I happen to have my slope still in my calculator. So what I'm going to do is store that as x, a variable, and I can use that to finish this calculation here. So I'll have 648, 648 divided by 8 minus the slope that I had, which is 1.07406, so on and so forth, times 171 divided by 8. And I don't need any special parentheses. I can just put this in exactly as I see it. 648 divided by 8 minus the slope times 171 divided by 8. And that works perfectly fine as is. The answer works out to be 58.0419, so on and so forth. Okay, so at that point, the last step is to just plug that into the equation formula. The equation formula is y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times x. So for us, that's going to specifically be y hat is equal to beta naught, which is 58.04, let's say, plus 1.07. So I'm just copying what I see here from my slope, right, and rounding to two decimal places after the decimal point, times x. And that's our equation. That's our answer to the part that says, use the data to find the least squares prediction line. Okay, so now it's time to answer the questions that were placed right next to this problem. Since we've created the least squares regression line here, our next thing is to try to answer this set of questions. So it says, I plugged an entire class of 200 into SPSS in order to calculate the least squares line for the entire data set. It says the results were as follows. So we had the following equation. Y hat is equal to 0.512x plus 70.196. And the first question they ask us is, what does x equals zero represent here? Well, if you think about it, x was the clicker points, right? It was the values that we used for the clicker points. So if we were to say that x equals 0, it means a student did not earn any clicker points here. So that's what x equals 0 represents. It represents no clicker points. Then it says, what is the expected grade for students who do not earn any clicker points? Well, all we have to do here is enter in 0. The expected grade is the same as the average grade, right? Remember, expected value is the same as average value. So I, if I put 0 in for x, That'll cancel out this term, leaving with 70.196. So the answer for this question is 70.196, right? So that means about a C or so, a low C, in fact, almost the minimum C, right? And then finally, it says, what is the average grade for a student who has 20 clicker points? Well, remember, X is the clicker points, right? So we enter that in, and this will produce the average grade that we expect to see for a student who has 20 clicker points. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So, I take the equation and I take this 0 0.512, 0 0.512 times 20 plus 70.196. When I enter that, I get the answer 80.436. 80.436. Okay, so if a student has as many as 20 clicker points, we expect that the average grade for that student would be around 80.436. Or another way to say it is to say that students who have um, 20 clicker points will usually have an average grade collectively of 80.436. Remember, this is an average grade, right? So it's not the grade for a particular student who has 20 clicker points, but rather for all the students who have 20 clicker points, this is an estimation of the average grade that we expect for that group of students. 80.436.